what people can do to learn more about gold and silver and what's happening and why and what the potential is to protect themselves. And eventually, what is going to happen as this occurs, the, the gold cartels, I call, is petrified of a soaring gold price. Paul Volcker, the, the former Fed chairman, said, up is bad for gold, down is good. They're doing everything they can to keep it under control because gold is the barometer of U.S. financial market health. It goes way up. Something's very wrong. And, but that's what's going to happen. And this is what they're doing. It's so obvious. It's the most obvious thing I've ever seen in 40 years in terms of markets. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance and Reluctant Preppers. We have a returning guest with great renown. Bill Murphy is the co-founder of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA.org. He joins us this Monday, June 29, 2020. Bill, thanks for coming back on. Great to be here, Dunnigan. Thanks for having me back. You are legendary among those who are interested in what's really happening on the precious metals markets because you and your co-partner, Chris Powell, founded GATA.org a long time ago to investigate and to publicize improper actions that have been happening on these gold exchanges and affecting the price of gold and affecting a lot of people's livelihoods and their futures. A lot of our viewers have written you questions every time we had you on, including this time. So we'd like to jump right in and, and get to those viewers' questions because they look to you as someone who's been watching as closely as anyone has over these periods of decades and really standing up for the truth and uh, really being a crusader for uh, the right thing being done, the rule of law, etc. So just really glad to have you here. Well, thank you. I don't know about being a legend. A legend in my own mind. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for the kind words. Sure. So we have a question here. It's going to be a tough one, but I think we'll get a sampling of your thought process, uh, a Google user asks, I'd like to see Bill give us a timeline. I know no one wants to give a date, but can this go on for five more years? How about 24 months? What's the worst case scenario? Well, in silver, I think we already have a worst case scenario. It's the worst thing I've ever seen in my all the years of watching commodities. And uh, it's a tough subject because gold's been inching its way up. It wants to explode it should be so much higher than it is now with all the money put into the system. Uh, the debt problems have been created, the, the economic devastation in the United States. It's clear as could be, and the only thing stopping it is, is the gold cartel. And at some point here, it's going to just explode out of nowhere. And it's inching its way that way all the time. And the market action is just crazy. I mean, like this Friday, we saw it go down $20. I went to my gym. I came back in an hour, and it was unchanged. It was just wild as can be. The volatility is really pick, picking up in gold as the bad guys, as I call it, the gold cartel, tries to keep the price from exploding. But the demand is there and it's going to go up. Silver, J.P. Morgan has had control of this market for more than nine years. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know how they're doing it all this amount of time, but they have. The gold-silver ratio is 100 to 1. It's ridiculous. Silver is the cheapest asset in the world. One day it will just go bananas. But, you know, I think I probably said that the last time I was on your show. Well, it's a theme we've been hearing from you for some time. I know when I met you at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Dallas, uh, when we were in your neck of the woods, um, you spoke as a keynote speaker on, on pretty much the same vein. But a lot of what you've been talking about through this time is that these current prices are not, they don't appear to be natural. The, the market action doesn't appear to be natural. And the the, the imbalance of demand, physical demand, which has been strong and remains strong, um, hasn't resulted in the normal appreciation that you would expect uh, in a free and open market. Um, there's a related question here from a Google user who says, do you agree with Jim Sinclair that there will be two resets, a Western-centric uh, IMF slash BIS reset, and then a little later a market-driven or natural reset? Well, Jim is as smart as they come, and I wouldn't be of any take any different opinion than he has because I have the greatest respect for him. I don't know. I've been hearing about resets for years. Uh, you know, back again when I met you and so on. And years ago, they were talking about a reset in, in two, 2020. It hasn't happened yet. Can it come at any time? Yes, and it'll come out of nowhere. I still would just wonder how because the government's behind 
the rigging of these markets and, and what they're going to do about the short position. The gold open interest keeps going up of late. That means that the banks are short these markets and a reset would just devastate them. Uh, the silver open interest, which I've been following closely forever, uh, you know, went from when it went when silver went to uh, 50 in 2011. The open interest is all 135,000 contracts all the way up. I've said this a number, number of times. However, recently it went back down to 135,000. I said, oh, <laughs> this is good. Well, guess what? It went up 40 to 50,000 contracts and the price of silver still hasn't done anything. So that meant nothing either yet. So but you have to wonder at some point if they're going to have a reset to answer a question more fully, what do they do about the short positions uh, uh, of all the, the banks and supporters of the rigging operations? Now, maybe they just forgive the debts and say that's part of what they're doing and that's that's the way it is. And they notify that there's their people that uh, they'll pay it off for them. I don't know. Now, you mentioned in passing there about the short positions of certain banks. But when we had Ted Butler on uh, about a month ago, he was in, and uh, two months ago as well, he was talking about that unlike for the past almost 10 years, that now it appears in his analysis that J.P. Morgan is no longer net short this market. Uh, do you have any uh, different perspective on that, or does that con concur with what you're seeing? Well, Ted's a smart guy, too. I mean, he follows it. This is what he does. I haven't seen any different uh, trading action in all this period of time. That's what I can say. In other words, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Hit silver goes at last three days in a row in what I call the internet price, what you'll see on Kitco and GoldSeek and 24-hour gold and, and so on. You know, it, it goes above 1790, goes straight down. And it's it's just all rigged by the same rigging operation. Detail-wise, uh, uh, is J.P. Morgan less? I don't know. They, they, they've operated this thing for so long, it's hard for me to imagine. I know one area where we differ from Ted is that uh, the government and the Bank for International Settlements is behind this major, these operations. And uh, could they be shifting some of the way they're doing and the, and the, and, and the no numbers? Yes, but absolutely nothing has changed so far in terms of the way, you know, silver is, again, is trading. And it's just, it's like a joke. We have a question from Psycho Stacker says, might we see a large dip in metals prices when the deflation actually starts to become apparent? It could be, but, you know, the, we know the trillions the United States put in the system, which has not been allowed to be reflected in the gold price, that this money is going to run out in a few weeks. There's going to be a clamor for more money. And all this money, where is it coming from? Why not do it forever? The, the, the inflationary part of the system uh, hasn't taken hold yet. And, uh, you know, you've got an election coming up in, in four months, and it's hard to imagine that the powers in there, the Trump administration is going to allow things monetarily or the Fed to fall apart if they can do anything about it, because otherwise, I mean, they might as well just give up right now. So I think, if anything, they're going to have you know, more money in the system, more uh, pressure for gold and silver to go on the upside. Second question from the same question. Uh viewer is, do you see the historic gold to silver ratio, which you just mentioned a little while ago, uh, that we are witnessing now possibly become the new normal? I haven't been writing silver for a while yet. I certainly hope not because I expect it to go down at least 50, which ought to put, you know, gold at around 35, silver around $35 right now. I think as in all things that go to an abnormal uh, uh, situations, and I think I know why, because of the rigging, that once silver goes, it will go bananas. And it's, that's why they're, they're keeping it in check. Our colleague uh, James McShirley says that silver is the uh, gold cartel's kryptonite because they're so afraid of it get, losing control of it. We have a question here from uh, Rocksteady who says, has there been any more news of Scotiabank's missing gold and what their impact is on the situation having on the industry and the market? No, it's a good question, and I don't know of any new information. All I know is that the, st the statistics are what is said about the gold market and the silver market. You just shake your head because it's most of it's so out of whack and what's really going on. You've had these exchange for physical operations uh, going on for years, and no one's really explained it to any degree that makes any sense. And, you know, they changed the contract on the COMEX when they needed to, and they've got gold here, gold there. How much does the... the uh, uh, the gold cartel really have left. It's my opinion what I can say, and I've been talking about this for a year. There's, they're running out of physical gold to maintain 
their stranglehold on the gold market. Been talking about it. When it started to break out last May, we, we identified that they were beginning to run short of physical gold. And that doesn't mean they don't have any. They don't have enough to do anything more than attack, attack. And then they have to retreat. They can get some gold from this place, that place. But relative to demand, they don't have enough to keep the gold price down anymore. Silver, I guess, is a different story for the moment. But it's just a matter of time before uh, gold explodes and, and all, a lot of these... Uh, Shady gold operations come to uh, you know, the light of day. We've got a question about the rule of law. Uh, actually, there's several of these. They all fall into a, a group. Uh, Rob Rage says, Bernie Madoff committed petty thief compared to these international banksters. He's in prison. They pay a fine and continue Crime Inc. enterprise. Do you think they will ever be justice brought for these? Well, that's a great question. You know, you, got, you can throw Enron in there and the, same kind of rigging operations that people identified for years. And, you know, God and Chris Powell has done a great job in, in, in sending stuff to the media and talking about it, getting in front of various uh, institutions, and nobody wants to touch it. It's like a lightning rod conversation. All these things you have these days, you know, liberals and conservatives and this way, and they'll have a big debate and go back and forth. In, in the gold card stuff, like, there's no debate. It's not allowed to be discussed. Stuff that Chris sends people is not printed. So it, what I've been saying for a long time, and I think it's the way it is with like these other scandals, nothing will happen in terms of mention of the real story until it blows up, which is exactly what happened with Madoff, as you know, as the your your questioner you know put put forth, and that's what's going to happen, I think, in gold because then they're going to have to come up with answers. How could this be? How could have the gold price exploded and gone berserk like this? And then there'll be some other defaults like Scotia or whatever they're doing. Who knows? But yeah, but only only when we get the the explosion in the gold price will people ask for answers. Related question about GATA specifically and what GATA has done and is doing uh, to help this. Hardy Potter asks, can you expand a little bit about GATA and its role in the precious metals market? Well, again, as I mentioned, my colleague Chris has done a great job sending stuff to all kinds of people. He puts out uh, information at www.gata.org all the time to inform people. Uh, God has had four different conferences. I was thinking about this uh, just yesterday. You know, from 2005 to 2011, we had four conferences in South Africa, up in Alaska. We had one in Dawson City. Then we had one in Washington, and we had a great conference in London. And it's been a long time. That was 2011. So I think the final thing we'll do is, I think what based on what's happened all these years, is we'll look forward to having one final conference when gold and silver really explode and the bad guys are exposed and we'll celebrate what's uh, really what what has gone on here and how we hung in there and quite frankly made a lot of money we were speaking with uh, andy Schechtman uh this weekend and had an interview with him published he talked about one thing that's changing is that people no longer ha can have the illusion that it's there's a safety in bonds for example if they want to flee the stock market that that's one thing that is changing uh Edward Leroy asks, what will scare the United States investors with money to invest to become so insecure that they will lose faith in bonds and the dollar and move cash into a more secure position? Nothing left but metals. But when? Well, you know, we had a taste of that when we had that crash uh, mm -hmm. on the coronavirus crash where all the markets went down. Well, the retail market, uh, my brothers in the business, I mean, demand for retail coins and silver went off the charts. The phones were just ringing like crazy because people were getting their money out of other markets and into gold and silver. And the gold coin premiums and silver coin premiums went, went you know, sky high. So right now, the plunge protection team, as I talk about all the time, they're in there doing their thing. And you get the stock market going down and they make sure it comes back up, especially in the last hour in certain markets, which we've seen for so many years. And they're trying to stabilize things while they try to figure out how to handle this, the coronavirus mess, among other things. And uh, it's it's... It's going to come back to the time when there'll be a panic again to buy gold and silver, you know, coins and, and, and products. Yeah, we've. I can concur with that, that we saw just unprecedented demand uh, through March, April, especially um, people who were just scrambling to get out get of the stock markets and uh, protect some of their their 401ks, their IRAs and getting into precious metals, that sort of thing. So it does seem like there's that human psychology that comes into play where where suddenly it becomes clear to people that there really aren't all these things that are just uh, being propped up at the moment 
uh, these various markets uh, are not actually places to preserve your wealth uh, when things get rough. Yeah, well, it's it's coming, and I think that people that buy gold and silver now uh, uh, are going to, you know, end up very happy campers in the years to come. That's the other ironic thing <laughs> about uh, sort of being a value investor or being a contrarian or whatever is is the the fortitude to be quote unquote wrong for a period of time until you suddenly are right, and then people say, "Well, why didn't you? Why didn't you warn me?" <laughs> it's like you can't win either way. So all you can do is try to try to position yourself as Wayne Gretzky, the great one in hockey world, said. You know, people ask him how does he that he has such a higher percentage of being in the right place at the right time and making the right plays. He said, "Well, I don't skate as most players do to where the puck is. I skate to where it's going to be. So you've got to be willing to look wrong until you're suddenly right." Well, I know that feeling being a silver bull for all these past years, and uh, I expect to sail off in the sunset with $100 silver, so uh, I'm still an optimist. I guess I've been that way most of my life, but I know it's coming, but boy, they're making it painful to wait all this period of time. Well, that's another point. As far as being an optimist about high metal prices, um, I've heard it said by multiple people in, in private conversations that I've had is that the world in which we will be living when metals attain their proper high prices is going to be a very different world than the one we're living in now. And is it optimistic to look towards that rather than will, it, will that be a grim future for, for many pe- parts of the economy, for people's lives, difficult strains will be under, and that that's the showing that people are reverting to recognizing that their eyes have been opened at that point. And they'll be recognizing the true safe harbor aspects of precious metals. Well, safe harbor means there's a storm. So I guess that'll be a time of, of many storms that we'll be facing at that time. Well, my colleague John, I mean, colleague, good friend John Embry says this all the time. You know, Bill, you're not maybe going to want to really like, like what you have to live in when when gold and silver go bananas. But you know, we can't do anything about that. Uh, uh, it is what it is, and at least it's a way of protecting uh, ourselves, and, and people can protect themselves. And quite frankly, with all this uh, uh, misery <laughs> had in silver all these years. I would like to be celebrating. I don't. You certainly don't want other people to suffer, go through any sort of, uh, you know, hardship. lack of a life. Yeah. You know, hardship. It's terrible. But but you can't do anything about it. So you might as well do anything, everything you can to maximize your own life while you can. Well, let me let me give you some credit, and and that's why we're here as well. Is we're trying to do what we can about it by speaking out. You're showing up at conferences. You're publishing every day and every week. I'm publishing, you know, three times a week on the channel. We're doing what we can, and and folks, anybody who's watching this, please forward this video and and all of our videos to friends, coworkers, family members, people you care about, because that is something we can do is get the awareness out there to try to help wake up people who are sleepwalking and who are going to wake up to a very rude awakening um, if we don't get them uh, awakened ahead of time. So that is something we can do. Well, you do a great job, and I think that's very important because right now I think people have been put to sleep a bit by the what I call the plunge protection team goosing up our stock markets. I mean, they're not that far from all-time highs, and right. what we're going through in America is uh, is just terrible. I mean, everywhere you turn here, things aren't what they were, and it's not being reflected yet. The economic uh, devastation uh, caused by the lockdowns and everything like that, right, we've lost uh, over 40 million unemployed. 41% of small businesses that advertise on Yelp are not going to come back ever, and uh, there's been this huge destructive impact on our, our real economy. And you're right, it's absolutely not reflected in the, in the markets. Right. We have a question here from Rob B. talking about the role that local and other politicians have played in this, in this demise. Seeing as most small city and town governments are closed and they're counterfeiting bonds to pay their bills, less the Fed's counterfeiting, how much longer before reason kicks in and people start working around the last vestiges of the power-hungry, corrupted patsy mayors and first selectmen and create new systems that exclude those quote-unquote powers that be from inclusion in the new system. So this is a question about what we the people can do to take back control over our financial lives rather than sitting there and waiting for the waiting for the next officially announced system to be handed to us from, from on high. Uh, what do you think people can do and should do to play a more proactive role in determining a fair and just future for ourselves financially? One, I guess, simplistically, they can vote in the United States in terms of what kind of leadership they have. But I think what you're doing is what people can do to learn more about gold and silver and what's happening and why and what the potential is to protect themselves. And eventually, 
what is going to happen as this occurs. The, the gold cartels, I call, is petrified of a soaring gold price. Paul Volcker, the, the former Fed chairman, said up is bad for gold, down is good. They're doing everything they can to keep it under control because gold is the barometer of U.S. financial market health. It goes way up. Something's very wrong. And, but that's what's going to happen. And this is what they're doing. It's so obvious. It's the most obvious thing I've ever seen in 40 years in terms of markets is, is to get involved in gold and silver uh, positions and in the shares, uh, certain ones that they like to protect themselves and get that information to other people so they can protect themselves. And I think at least as we have this chaos that's coming, and I agree with that analysis, uh, at least you'll have some way to... Uh, sugarcoat the situation, which is, you know, we all have lives to live and, and want to make the best of them. When you said the shares, you're talking about mining shares. Yes, the mining gold, silver okay. mining shares, which are still way undervalued relative to, uh, the, the, they're not the silver price, but the gold price. Uh, one more question about uh, government inaction. Jeff Taylor says, in the light of the fact that government has never acted to stop gold and silver manipulation by the banks that serve its political and economic self-interests, why would we expect them to do so now? Will they ever cease doing this until the government itself ceases to exist? Well, uh, my opinion is that they're going to. The, the, what's going to happen is it's happening in gold gradually now, very gradually. They're going to blow up. They won't be able to do what they've been able to do all these years because they don't have the physical gold. If they had it, it would go on forever, and and for years. You know, in, in the beginning of this century, we had ten, eleven years where they let the gold price go up gradually, and then it exploded in 2011. And then ever since then, we've, we've never made a new high. It's been under pressure and now coming back. So they're managing the situation the way they see that they can. The good news is they're not going to be able to manage it too much longer in the sense of uh, keeping the price under control. That's what's happening right now uh, in, in the gold, gold market at the uh, you know, 1770, 1771, up, down, up, down. They're trying to keep it from exploding. I don't think they can do it, and it's, we're looking at a gold price explosion pretty soon. This next question is one that echoes one that we get quite often, and I think it, it deserves clarification. Uh, Without excuse, 2011 says, Bill, we are all expecting for precious metals prices to skyrocket in the very near future. Why then would anyone be selling precious metals at this time? It makes no logical sense to do that now unless the sellers do not believe what they're preaching. What do you say to that? I know we talked about that briefly with Andy Schechtman about two weeks ago, and we gave some different perspectives on it. Like, uh, like let's say you were uh, believing a flood was going to come, and you built a boat for your family or an ark. <laughs> But then you decided, well, while we're waiting for the flood, I guess I can go into the ark building business and build arcs for other people so you can help other people to be prepared like yourself uh, and actually try to do some good for others. That's one reason you don't just keep building arcs and say, no, it's just, it's all for me. Um, but anyway, what, what is your thought about uh, anyone who might have reasons to sell precious metals at this time and not just dealers, but anyone else? Well, first of all, as you know, I'm obviously very prejudiced towards gold and silver. But honestly, if you would listened to me four years ago, and sold your silver and bought certain stocks in the NASDAQ, you know, Apple and Amazon and so on. Hey, that was a brilliant move. So I had to be careful. I think I'm still a $100 silver guy. When it goes, it's going to be fantastic. But I've been way too early, and J.P. Morgan has been winning the day, and, and uh, that's going to change. And so I expect, again, that by the time this is over, uh, and I have one of my later and interviews with you and maybe one of the last ones, we're going to be sailing off into the sunset and the investors in gold and silver are going to be very happy campers and all this weight, which has been agonizing, will pay off in silver. And quite frankly, gold's on its way. I mean, it's it's not too far from its all-time high in the U.S. It's made highs in 73 different currencies. Uh, it's been moving. It's been on the move. So outside of the U.S., you go, hey, you know, so if you sold your gold way back when, then that was not a good move, <laughs> unless, of course, you got Amazon or something like that. But um, uh, our time is coming, and the rationale for gold and silver going nuts to the upside couldn't be clearer. We have uh, one more question here from Polynesian Pip, who says, as the fiat currencies finish their collapse, what will, the gold, what will gold be priced in as against, or for that matter, any commodity? And uh, we had a a cute uh, reply from another uh, viewer, Francis Wood, who said, gold is the price. But uh, what's your thinking about 
next system when fiat currencies become discredited, um, what what do you see ahead? Well, you know, it's it's a difficult question because I can't imagine uh, things changing too much in terms of what people say you, what you buy uh, green beans with in terms of dollars or this or that. What what I'm confident of is that the gold price will go bananas to the upside. And the numbers can be anything you want, from 3,000, 10,000, higher, much higher. Everybody's got different numbers. It's just numbers. The key is that it's going to go way, way up. And silver is at 101 ratio is the cheapest asset in the world so that you won't have to worry about those other issues if you have enough gold and silver to protect yourself. Yep. And uh, we have one here that was a little tongue-in-cheek, but I thought you might enjoy it. Francis Wood says, Gentlemen, I found that the best time to buy silver is when Jamie Dimon rents a truck. Have you found a better prediction method? <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> you know, all I know is I, I just can't wait for J.P. Morgan to uh, suck wind on their short silver trade because they just never go away. Well, Bill, um, we're going to give you one more chance to let people know how they can find your work because you are a prolific uh, writer and you do work on multiple channels. So how can people keep up with your work? Well, uh, again, for if they want to hear what Chris Powell's putting out, they go to www.gata.org. And I write at lemetropolecafe.com. People can sign up for a two-week free trial and see if it's of, uh, of value to them. And uh, I expect to continue on until we win the day. Thanks, Bill, and I want to remind everyone to support this channel both on patreon.com slash reluctantpreppers and also for gold and silver sales. Go ahead and email us at libertyandfinance at protonmail.com. Also hope to see you all in person at the Freedom Fest 2020 in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's July 13th through 16th and the following week at the Sprott Virtual Natural Resource Symposium. We'll put links to both of those in the description of this video. Bill, really appreciate you being here every time, and especially this time with us here. On the behalf of our viewers, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Don. Again, you do a great job. Hey, everyone. If you haven't already made plans to attend Freedom Fest 2020 at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, this July 13th through 16th, you're going to be missing out because I'm going to be there, as is Doug Casey and a host of other speakers. You're going to meet lots of freedom lovers at Freedom Fest 2020, including speakers like John Amash, the House of Representatives, Doug Casey, George Gilder, Futurist, Mike Lee from the U.S. Senate. We've got Stephen Moore from the Heritage Foundation, Rand Paul from the U.S. Senate, and many more speakers, Donald Trump Jr. You'll see me at the Miles Franklin booth, but I'd like to see you there. And if you want to get there at a discount, check out in the description of this video, and you'll see a discount code that'll get you $75 off an admission at Freedom Fest 2020 this July 13th through 16th in Las Vegas, Nevada, Caesars Palace. See you there. If you've decided that now is the right time for you to protect your family's financial future by acquiring physical precious metals, gold and silver, I'm delighted to let you know that I have now become a licensed dealer's representative for Miles Franklin, one of the oldest and most trusted names in bullion dealerships. And we can provide you with physical delivery to your personal possession or to professional vault storage or precious metals IRAs. Just email me at libertyandfinance at protonmail.com and please include your name and phone number in your email to libertyandfinance at protonmail.com. We'll get right back with you and find out how to best meet your needs so that you can either begin or increase your acquisition of physical precious metals now and protect your family's future starting today.